Beautiful, isn't it? Birds. When I was a kid, I sometimes uh, used to lie down in the grass, watching flocks of birds as they were making waves like this and beautiful movements together up in the sky. And I was wondering, how could they move as one with such beauty and coordination? Who's managing these harmonized crowds? Who's leading and who's following in complex networks? The answer is nobody, and the answer is everybody. I will share with you, both in theory and practice, what is going on both when it comes to birds and when you and me are together with others organizing ourselves at work. Human behavior in organizations and societies has always fascinated me. How do we organize? When does governance emerge naturally as with the birds? And when do we need formal structure, standard operation procedures, routines and hierarchies to work together? This is Denise. Or Dennis, depending on. I think I go for Denise. Denise is a network player. What she does influences all the others. And she's one of many, just like you and me. Sometimes and somewhere, Dennis follow, and sometimes and somewhere, she leads someone, just like you and me. She follows the individuals in front of her, and she leads the ones behind her. She has a mutual relationship to those either side of her when it comes to following and leading. She is a part of a big network of birds, a flock. All the other birds in the network lead and follow the others close to them based on the same principles. When we add all these together, an intelligent swarm is created. The birds on the outskirts uh, of the flock are the whole network's sensors focused on the external environment. For instance, when the eagle comes, they send signal into the network by changing their movement. And we get a lead, follow, lead, follow, lead, follow, lead, follow chain reaction throughout the whole system. What I will invite you to do now is to just stand up, everyone, please. Excellent. And I want you to team up with the person next to you. So go into pairs of two. Do that now. Team up with the person next to you. Excellent. Fine. Decide who's A and B among you, okay? Who's A and who's B? Do that now. Excellent. What I want you to do now is if you come over here. Hi, what's your name? Trun. Trun. Hi, Trun. Uh, if you do like me and Trun here, I am A now, and I'm leading Trun, and you are following me, okay? So I'm just moving with my hand, and Trun is following me as B. So A, take the lead, and lead B. Excellent, thank you, Trun. So just lead in a way so it's easy for B to follow you, okay? Lead in a way so it's easy for B to follow you, and B should follow in a way so it's easy for A to lead, okay? B should follow in a way so it's easy for A to lead. Excellent work, okay. Now we change, B is taking over the lead, so B leads, and he follows. And from the outside, it's impossible to see the difference. But that's the case when we're going into an office as well. Who's leading and who's following? B is leading, and A is following. Isn't that the case? Excellent. Please be seated again. This exercise can be developed into a lot of different directions, but this, the principle is quite a simple. We follow and lead the one close to us. Now I'm going into some challenges, and that is how can, we, how can governance be executed in a world where the public, private, and third sector are changing rapidly due to globalization and increased complexity? Globalization has caused increased communication and the dynamic, dynamics of more and more 
closely connected countries, markets, societies and individuals. The different organizations we belong to need to adapt to contexts uh, where, where the amount of links and the amount of communication is increasing at high speed. Increased complexity has become a powerful factor in how we think, talk, decide and act together. The most important question in our time, from my point of view, is how. How should we organize and govern our organizations, both in private and public sector, to meet this complexity? At all levels, local, national, regional and global, we have created formal and quite rigid hierarchies for governance that pacifies us. We have become pieces, not players. A few people play, but the vast majority that can really make a difference are sitting on the benches watching the drama play on out through the media. When national representatives, politicians, bureaucrats play national cost-benefit games in Copenhagen and Rio, we passively sit and watch them fail. We have a governance sclerosis where national bureaucracies also are struggling in creating the side effects in the health sector, in the justice sector, and in most other sectors. This is not primarily about money and financial resources, as many argue. This is about how we organize and govern. We see signs of an institutional collapse with growing public costs and a growing number of managers that manage managers. In business organizations, we see that a lot of men old mental maps of how to minimize costs and maximize revenue must change to attract customers in more complex markets. When do we participate at work? When do we participate in uh, solving the climate crisis? When do we participate in solving the financial crisis? We don't feel that we participate. A lot of people are sitting inside hierarchies, focusing on their tiny part, and then they go home, fall asleep, get up in the morning and do it all over again. Yeah. Our strong talent and desire to contribute do not have proper arenas at work. We are not using the possibilities inside our organization. We have seen it work very, very well in crowds and crowdsourcing on the outside of our organizations. How have we organized ourselves at work to meet the need for organizational flexibility? How do we govern? How do we follow? And how do we lead the ones close to us, both in the physical and digital space? Because that's, it. that's where it starts. This is also Denise, or Dennis. I think we call this guy Dennis. Um, the same dynamics takes place here. He's a part of a group. He's a network player. Uh, what he does influences the others. He follows some and he leads some. He's part of a big network of people. All the other individuals in the network lead and follow the others close to them based on the same principle. When we add all this together, we get an intelligent swarm. The individuals on the outskirts of the flock are the whole network's sensors on the external environment here as well. For instance, when they see an opportunity, or a threat, they send signals into the network by changing behavior. And we get a lead follow, lead follow, lead follow chain reaction throughout the whole system. This is the hierarchy. An organization in uh, which people or groups are ranked one above it, the other according to status or, her, or authority. Starting in the later part of the 18th uh, century, there began a transition in parts of manual labor towards machine-based manufacturing. The hierarchy was good, it was very good at amplifying, increasing the scale of individual labor. It's an old model. I don't mean 
we should throw hierarchies away. No. Production of scale is important through coordination of simple, repetitive tasks with limited focus based on routine and external motivation. Carrot and stick. In hierarchies, there's a need for control from the top and a consequence, a lot of reporting upwards and auditing on compliance. This system is more about the same, repetitive work and specialization. Centralized authority, chain of command, an internal competition among the different units on time, resources, and attention. But again, we should not throw away this model. It's good for amplifying, increasing the scale of individual labor, production of scale. But I'm surprised how this old-fashioned model is still functioning as the main operating system for organizations that rely on innovation, inner drive from their people, responsible individuals with a brain, people that create new stuff. This is the network. Human networks are swarms made up of individuals acting as free agents with an agency. Agents that want to contribute, produce effects, get attention, get the job done, get credit, get recognition. Human networks can develop into a complex system with fascinating patterns from very simple interaction from its parts, you and me. It's decentralized, it's self-organized, the power is distributed, it's more social, it's more fun. We are all agents in different networks, also at work, but they are not made explicit inside our organizations. And since we, and since we went into this millennium, we have seen fantastic effects created by networks outside of our organizations. Wikipedia, the open source movement in programming, keybound funding, Flickr on sharing, sharing, and Facebook, and a whole lot of other crowd and network-based initiatives. We have the training, all of us. Now we need to apply this within our organization at work. Networks are social systems for natural order creation and natural goal achievement. You may think that this is an idealistic dream that cannot be taken into action where you are. Well, the people I work with every day make digital and physical network arenas inside of quite traditional organizations all around the world. Inside these arenas, group formation and group action takes place with ease in a natural way. It's easy. Pick the individuals to the network or let them pick themselves based on attraction in form of a challenge. Manifest the network digitally. There are plenty of corporate tools for doing that. Create common goals and work on trust within the network. Create projects, attractive, attractive for the individual based on their skills, can do, and attitude, will do. Treat the individuals as agents with inner drive and a desire to contribute. Allow self-organization and order creation and redefine the term control and how you achieve control. You will be amazed. We see it work every day inside organization as a complementary, a complementary operating system to the hierarchy. It creates individual engagement and collective coordination. It, look, it doesn't look too happy still, but it's thinking of both. Allowing and harnessing this type of complexity is the only way to succeed in complex environments. We are all like Dennis. We are a part of networks, and as human beings, we are also part of hierarchies. And there is a trade-off between these two. There's a trade-off between handling complexity through the network and handling scale 
through the hierarchy. We know how to lead and follow in both. All organizations can be seen as hybrids between the two. For the last 200 years, we have cultivated and sophisticated variation of the hierarchy model. Now it's time to spend the next 200 years to cultivate and sophisticate the network way of doing things together inside our organizations. Do not climb ladders in hierarchies. Do not be a piece in a hierarchical machine alone. Participate, think, talk, decide and act as a network player. It's the only way to solve complex challenges together with others. 2.0 million people are connected to the internet today. 2.1 billion people, and it's increasing. The software and the methods that enable us to act in concert through networks and arenas inside organizations are here. We can do tasks that are larger, more distributed, more complex, and longer lasting than the hierarchy can tackle alone. It's time to release the potential inside of you and inside your organization to mobilize for new group formations and collective action that makes a big difference. Thank you.